Which is the worst single decision in history ever made by a person? The decision by the Scottish to invade England during Black Death must be up there. Mao Zedongpist Kapain, he basically told his nation to take pots and pans to kill all the sparrows, however, the ecosystem was disturbed and the locust population skyrocketed. Seeds, he thought that planting seeds one meter in the ground would result in greater roots and better harvest, he also thought that putting tons of seeds in one compact area would cause a better harvest. All the seeds died however, around 30 million or so died from famine under his rule. Hey, look at the other nations industrializing. Let's smelt all our metal to build better infrastructure. What? It creates pig iron which is super unstable and impure therefore being ultimately useless? Oops, Mao. Alan Savory, https colon slash slash www.fastcompany.com slash 2681518 slash this dash man dash shot dash 4000 dash elephants dash before dash he dash figure dash out dash that dash herds dash of dash cows dash can dash save dash the dash planet closing parenthesis the ecologist who killed 40,000 elephants because it was believed that grazing was causing the desertification of Africa, only to find out later that elephants were essential to prevent desertification. A now you see me sequel not being called now you don't. Eastman Kodak deciding not to go forward with their own newly invented digital cameras and instead sticking with film because it made them so much money at the time. The guy that sold the bottling rights for Coca-Cola, for one dollar, and never even made the guy pay the one dollar. HTTPS colon slash slash www.coca-colacompany.com slash stories slash when dash coke dash bottle. Maybe not the worst, but maybe Ronald Wayne. He was a co-founder of Apple along with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak in 1976, just 12 days after forming the company. He sold his shares for $800. He owned 10% of the company, which would be worth tilde $80 billion, $80 billion today, and hash X200B. Source, https colon slash slash www.cnbc.com slash 2017 slash 09 slash 12 slash apples Dash third dash co dash founder dash Ronald dash Wayne dash sold dash his dash stake dash for dash eight oh oh dot html closing parenthesis don't know how accurate this is but the story still stands and maybe the worst business decision ever made was by Xerox with their Alto computer Xerox invented the graphical interface modern computers use desktop folders copy paste etc they basically invented the modern computer in the 70s but the problem was the people in charge at the time were businessmen without any technical knowledge so they didn't realize what they had they did nothing with it and gave it away to universities and showed other companies the famous story is that Steve Jobs saw this and within five minutes realized this was the way computers would work in the future. He copied it, because Xerox didn't patent their invention and didn't do anything with it and the rest is history. Xerox could have been Apple or Microsoft, or both, they could have had a monopoly on the entire PC industry, almost every company uses Windows in their offices. I think 80 or 90% of consumers uses Windows, that could have been Xerox, they had the tech maybe 10 years before anyone else, they could have been the most valuable company of all time but they just gave it away. Robert Ballard, one of the guys who discovered Titanic, says that his biggest regret is that he and Jean Luce Michel didn't bring a piece of the Titanic up with him when he first discovered it in 1985. At the time, they didn't want to disturb the wreck, and leave it pristine, but if they had done so, then they would have been able to claim legal ownership of the wreck under international maritime law, and therefore more control over it. Because they chose not to do that, everyone and their grandma is free to take artifacts and pieces of the wreck, and this makes preservation impossible. Edit, a fair number of people have been asking this in the comments, so instead of replying to everyone individually, I thought I'd put this in as an edit, and thanks to the commenters who helped explain this, there is a school of thought which Robert Ballard, and myself, incidentally, subscribes to, which is that the wreck is the final resting place of the more than 1500 souls who perished that cold night on the 14th of April 1912 and must therefore be treated with the same respect and dignity. Private companies who take artifacts and pieces of the wreck and sell them for profit are effectively grave robbing, and while the wreck is gradually deteriorating into nothing, the argument is that this doesn't matter, it's just nature taking its course. Of course, there is the argument that removing certain artifacts from the wreck and putting them in a museum is conducive to both the public good and the memory of the victims. I don't have a problem with that, personally, and I can't speak for Robert Ballard, but I do have a problem with the commercial scavengers taking pieces up to sell them. 
My understanding is that if he and his team were the registered owners of the wreck, he would have a claim to anything taken from the wreck and sold for profit, which would potentially deter people. Radcliffe Line, the process to divide India and Pakistan boundary in 1947 was done hastily and without major considerations to local populous religion, Radcliffe was not a geography guy and majorly messed up the process. Millions died link https colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash radcliffe underscore line closing parenthesis. Well, the decision of Analchuk, the governor of the Khwarezmian city of Otrar, to attack Genghis Khan's trade caravan was pretty bad, Khan was famous as a ruthless warlord, not the sort of guy you want to piss off dot but maybe they could have got away with it. Genghis sent three ambassadors to negotiate a settlement, which is when Muhammad E, the Shah of Quartzum, made the really bad decision to kill one of these ambassadors and send the other two back without their beards as a sign of humiliation. Genghis Khan was so enraged he assembled an army and destroyed the Khwarezmian Empire, wiped out every town they had, he even rerouted a river to wipe out the village where the Shah was born, wiping it off the map. By 1120 there wasn't much of anything left. So, both Analchuk or Muhammad E of Quartzum qualify, take your pick, https colon slash slash meganmastersanauthor.com slash bad dash decisions dash history dash provoking dash Genghis dash Khan slash. When Mr. Hans tried to bang that horse. A little background https colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash enumclaw underscore horse underscore sex underscore case closing parenthesis. My great great grandfather, a carpenter, did some work for a poor painter in the neighborhood, the painter had no money, so he offered either a bottle of wine or a painting. My great great grandfather chose the wine. The painter was Edvard Munch, and the painting would have been worth millions upon millions today, or even just a few decades later, if translated to today's money. Edit, reply to the first guy who pointed it out, true. Doesn't really qualify. I guess what makes a decision really bad is when you should be able to see the consequences. Hey, let's create a coffee machine that uses a single use plastic cup for every cup of coffee or tea. How bad can the trash from that really be? I actually read that the creator of the K-Cup, John Sylvan, regrets inventing the pod system. Alcibiades was considered a traitor in Athens for leading his men to death, a traitor in Sparta because he got the queen to cheat on the king with him and a traitor in Persia after including them in a war edit, so I did a little bit of info and the switching sides and stealing statues slongs are also true plus he is a bisexual. Not like there is anything wrong with bisexuality. How about the guy who bought 20,000 Albanian slaves, brought them to Cairo, trained them to be the greatest warriors of their time, and then got overthrown by said slave warriors because they were so well trained? https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash mamluk timesuck podcast about Napoleon Bonaparte is where I got this from, it's a good one if you have an hour to listen, https colon slash slash open dot spotify dot com slash episode slash 2qc4 Pizigwiskdower 2R question mark C equals Y3 H Pigwesksgrom 9 La. Hong Shochuan declared the Taiping Rebellion after he had a nervous breakdown from failing the imperial examinations, he proclaimed that he was the brother of Jesus Christ. 20 to 30 million people died. Uh, Kaiser Wilhelm E. Firing Otto von Bismarck Bismarck had a plan, he always has a plan, but not when an incompetent Kaiser boots him out of his means of putting his plans into action. Bismarck had everything set up perfectly, but Wilhelm E. decided to fluff up everything he had set up, and got into World War I for it. Edit Tilda Tilda Thack Gold Kindle Strangler Tilda Tilda If you want to learn more about the greatest Chad in European history since Voltaire, I highly recommend watching this series, https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash playlist question mark list equals plikia o wige underscore 5 dtz underscore fabquixo 9 tz dx 1 htwf closing parenthesis which goes over bismarck pretty well well having just watched chernobyl all right gentlemen we've successfully fended off the Greeks for 10 years, our great city of Troy still stands, if we keep this up surely they will realize the siege is fruitless and return home before long, yo captain there's this big butt wooden horse outside, oh rad bring it in. The Donner Party of 90 pioneers choosing to take a shortcut when heading west from Illinois to California in 1846, said shortcut led to them getting trapped in the Sierra Nevada mountains and resorting to cannibalism.
people. Gerald Ratner talking garbage about his own business, he was ousted and the firm almost collapsed before restructuring and rebranding. That one time Nintendo had a partnership with Sony to develop a CD-based console but in the end changed their mind and kicked Sony out because they decided to stick with cartridges, Sony then thought screw this, we'll make our own console, with blackjack and hookers, and created the PlayStation as a fluff you towards Nintendo.